the effects in the distort category warp and distort once you've seen a couple of those effects and you've kind of seen them all so i'm just going to give you uh, my top three of the distort effects and then we'll use one in a little mini project in the next movie Perhaps the most powerful of all distort effects is liquify. So I have here this distort project open and the Chad Karma comp open, and we're going to apply the liquify effect to my face. And the liquify effect is very similar to the liquify in Photoshop. Basically, we have a series of tools here. The first one is probably the one you'll use the most. This is a warp tool. And you simply click on it and drag things that you want to move around. So if I want to give myself more of a pig nose, I can click and drag up like so. And if at any time I want to erase that, which I do, I'm going to click on this tool right here, the bottom right-hand corner one, which is the Reconstruct tool. And I can click and drag on that and kind of fix that. Now, going back to the Warp tool, it's good for uh, fixing blemishes like my uh, neck fat's kind of popping out too much there. So I can click on this and kind of tuck that back in. And maybe a little bit more on this side. Also, for exaggerating features like my eyebrows here, they look a little curious and suspicious. So we could exaggerate it and make it even more curious and suspicious. I want to bring this one down. Now we can change the size of our brush by going to the Warp Tool options, and increasing the brush tool size or the brush size, which gives us access to a bigger range by moving our cursor around. And the Liquify tool is always a good time. So what I'm going to do here is uh, select the uh, the Pucker tool. The Pucker tool sucks things in. As I click and hold, I <laughs> uh, things kind of get sucked in to wherever I'm clicking. Now the opposite of the pucker tool is the bloat tool, which kind of punches everything out. So if I want to make my eye really big here, I can just click and hold until I get a couple really big eyes. So it's good for little fixes like tucking and moving and things like that. Uh, but it's also good for just plain old fun and warping and, and making things look like aliens, which is great. Let's go over to twirl here. Uh, this is just a simple layer with just like a little bar here. And if we apply the twirl effect, You'll see how great this is for motion graphics. I apply twirl to this little bar, and then if I adjust the angle value, we see this thing kind of warp around. We could keep going, of course, until it wraps around itself, making kind of like a, a bullseye. But it's also good just for creating wavy lines. How many times, if, if you're designing something, do you run into a situation where you want just a curved line, just a smooth flowing curved line, like a ribbon or something, and the twirl effect is great for that. Now, the edges of our object are not being affected, so I can increase the twirl radius to make sure those are all covered. And now, when I twirl the angle, look at that. If I want just like some cool design elements that are curvy, it's a real quick and easy way to do that. Also, I could adjust the twirl center. Notice it's an effect control point, and I could animate all these properties, so I could just move the twirl point around, creating just some really ethereal and uh, elegant graphics. Next, we're going to go over to the Wave Warp composition. Wave Warp is another cool effect. Uh, it distorts, but it's an auto-animating effect, which means that as soon as I apply Wave Warp, not Wave World, it's Wave Warp, as soon as I apply Wave Warp to this layer, it instantly distorts, and as I hit the Home key and preview this, we'll see that it's automatically animating already. The Wave Warp effect attempts to simulate the look of an object in water getting distorted by waves. So we could lower the wave height, maybe make this a little bit more subtle. Not going to the negatives here. Uh, maybe we could increase the wave speed so the, the wave's actually faster. So it doesn't go as high, but it's actually wiggling more often. So that way we have almost like a, like a flag waving effect. And so as I mentioned, we're now going to go into a real world scenario and use these distort effects there. But be aware if there's something that you want to curve or flow or move or tweak in some way, the distort effects are a good category to check for that type of thing.